And now it's time for my favorite weekly feature, The Blast from the Past. And this one goes back, well, about 48 years. And what I love about all these blasts in the past are the same thing. They're in black and white, and it's not so much the call, but it's the musical track in the background that drives me nuts. <laughs> it's like really a retro, rustical, nostalgic feel. And I love that because I'm a rustic, retro, nostalgic feel kind of guy. Okay, let's go back to Yonkers Raceway. 1960, the International, mentioned before, the two favorites, gone, early. This winds up a heater, and wait till you see what happens after the dead heat. Seven top harness thoroughbreds get away at Yonkers in the rich international pace. Caduceus, the third choice of the punters, sets the early pace. On the rush for the turn, he cuts sharply to the rail, and two horses break stride. Widower Creed, favorite number two, O'Brien Hanover, number one. They never really get back into contention. Seven thousand fans see a hard contested event. In the drive for the finish, it's Bye Bye Bird and Caduceus battling. Bye Bye Bird breaks pace when Caduceus cuts in. Meantime, Champ Bolo, a 45 to 1 shot, has come up even with Caduceus. They finish in a dead heat, each with foul claims against him. The claim against Caduceus is upheld, and Champ Bolo is the winner. When was the last time you saw that? That there was a dead heat, and one of the horses in the heater gets DQ'd? The last time I saw it was about like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it would probably happen to me because that's my luck, you know? Okay, anyway, interesting race here last week that took place at Harris Chester. It was on a Wednesday and it was a ladies' event, ladies' drivers only, an incredibly worthy cause, the Susan B. Komen Fund for Breast Cancer Research. Uh, I'm sure we all have, have had people that have had that, and it's a wonderful cause. In that wonderful event, the horse set a new seasonal mark and was driven by a famous name in harness racing, Case. Walter Case, you may recall, Tim Tietrick broke his single season record for most wins at 1100 some odd, some odd crazy number. His sister is Kelly Case, and she's won nearly a thousand races. And she's quite a good driver on her own. And we caught up with Kelly in the paddock here at Harris Chester and talked to her about her winning drive. Tell us a little bit about this competition. Um, it's a worthy cause. We uh, go around um, all over the different tracks all over the country. We've driven at a lot of tracks this year. And it's all they are a charity of their choice. Usually it's for breast cancer. And I'm proud to be associated with it. I take my time away from my barn. And it's in my family. But it's, it's worth it to me. It gets me back driving some more. I miss driving. I've had over 800 wins. I'd like to get 1,000. But it, this, this has been a good day today. I flew up from Florida and got lucky enough to get a good trip and win the race. Thanks, Kelly. When we come back, we'll go around the oval. You know how much we love going around the oval, right, babe? I do. I love it. When we come <laughs> back, stay with us. Rob is the rabbit's foot because everyone feels a little luckier when he's around. And that's why he's a part of your group. Everyone plays a part at Harris. Only 10 minutes south of the Philadelphia airport. Hi everyone and welcome back. Sunday was a real big night at Dover. They've got some great races going on down there. And by the way, you can bet all those races anywhere, including Dover, right here at Harris Chester. So do bear that in mind. Well, they had four terrific stakes races on the card at Dover on Sunday. And with the first, the matron, Heather's got all that for you right now. Yeah, we're going to pretty much jump right into this race. I'll tell you that it's a purse of almost $253,000, and it's for the three-year-old trotting fillies. This is a great field of horses. Let's send it up to Jack Gallagher for the call. Stage show from the outside, puts her head in front, three quarters, 125 and three-fifths, or midway on the final turn. There goes stage show up to get the lead. Into second, Creamy Mimi, three wide is poster pinup, four wide, Leonard Kronos, they come toward the top of the stretch turning for home now and with the lead at stage show stage show being tracked by creamy mimi coming through the stretch stage show's got the lead it's stage show on the outside here comes a pendulum with creamy mimi stage show is in front stage show and driver dave Pallone get there in 155 and one this horse raced so good first over and she ended up beating creamy mimi who got a perfect trip behind her yes right. and creamy mimi's tough and then third was E. Pangeline. Okay. They also had the $260,000 Matron Stakes Final for three-year-old trotting Colts and Geldings, and a familiar name was in there, and not the favorite. Crazed, with Tim Tietrich, was not the favorite in the race. Holiday Credit and In Focus, the Jimmy Tactic Train entry, was the three-to-five choice. Second choice was Crazed at six-to-five. What happened? 
in focus with Craze on the outside. And Craze is up to get a short lead from in focus. Now Holiday Credit comes to the outside. The others are far back. They're at the top of the stretch. And Craze has gone up and gotten the lead, begins to move away, opens up two lanes. Holiday Credit moves into second, coming through the stretch. It'll be Craze. In focus, cut, cut the mile. Holiday Credit was in the 2 hole. Got a perfect trip. All Craze did was come up on the outside and go by everybody and breeze and win the race for fun in 154. He does that. He's that good. The entry was second and third. And now Heather's got another race from Dover. Yes, another matron. And it's for $253,000, a three-year-old pacing fillies. This is a super field. We've got three fillies in here. All of them have double-digit wins for this year. We've got Art Imitates Life, Tug River Princess, and Native Bride. Let's watch. And Native Bride begins to move away. Native Bride opens up two and a half, three lengths. Tug River Princess on the outside. Art Imitates Life has the rail. Trapped is Hannah Isabel, who now gets off the rail. They're at the top of the stretch, and Native Bride has a four-length lead as they straighten away. Native Bride has the lead. Racing on the outside, that's Tug River Princess. Battling with Art Imitates Life for second, it's Native Bride. The heavy favorite was Native Bride with driver Brian Sears, and they win in 151-3. and three. They just work it on the front end, and just this is a little filly with a gigantic stride and a big heart. She's super. She takes yeah. home her sixth consecutive victory. Second was Tug River Princess. Who couldn't get near her. No, and, and she's a tough horse, Tug River Princess is. Yes, she and was. Third is Art Imitates Life. Okay, and the $390,000 Progress Pace final for three-year-old pacing geldings. It promised to be a great race, and it did not disappoint. Dally off his romp on the limb went off at three to five. A little surprising there. The entry of Badlands Nitro and the Christmas horse, Rudy Rednose, was even money and old bombers after that. Here's the call with Jack Gallagher. They continue up the back stretch toward the final turn. Rudy Rednose, the lead is more than a length. Rudy Rednose, Dally, down inside, proper respect. Bad Lance, Nitro now three wide. Three quarters, 121. Midway on the final turn, Rudy Rednose, two lengths. Circling up from the back of the pack, here comes Better Sweet. They come toward the top of the stretch. Rudy Rednose, a two and a half length leader, proper respect. Better Sweet on the far outside, coming through the stretch. Rudy Rednose, desperately trying to get there. Here comes Better Sweet to win it. Better sweet, circle the field, draws off. Luke Willett must have looked at the odds board and believed those odds, and he drove Dally like he couldn't lose. He did. The Badlands Nitro Rudy Red Nose entry should have picked up the pieces. They didn't. Cat Manzi driving Better Sweet could have. He did. At 32 to 1, he wins the race in 150 flat. Cat Manzi in the bike comes third over, and we talked to Cat about this big win. Here's Cat. I went into the race with a horse that, uh, you know, had showed a lot of talent, and uh, just uh, something went wrong with him in his uh, in his uh, elimination race, and he didn't. Go I was disappointed in him, but uh, Joey Policino figured it out what it was, and uh, the race just kind of fell on my lap. I mean, the trip went my way, and uh, the horse, the best horse I thought was. Uh, uh, Sears horse and uh, Bayland Nitro, and he just wasn't up to his best race. So uh, I just was able to take advantage of uh, you know some uh, situations. Really, it's better to be lucky than good anyway, right? Well, I, I proved that. <laughs> You've got to tell us about some uh, an event coming up, don't you? Actually, yes. There's a big award that was given to Hanover Shoe Farms, which mm -hmm. is probably the most famous breeding farm in the entire world. Probably. I would say so. Mm -hmm. November 20th, they're getting the American Association of Equine Practitioners 2008 Award for Outstanding Service in Equine Welfare. Let me tell you, Hanover Shoe Farms has over 100 horses there just hanging out, being fat, happy, not breeding, not doing anything. They're just retired there. That says a lot about Hanover Shoe Farms, so good for them. Do you think you could read that again? No. Nah. <laughs> okay, well, that's, we're out of time. So the half hour went. I told you it was hardest racing, fastest paced half hour. And for Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you the next best thing to betting and winning is betting and losing. Till next week. Bye bye.